here tonight, guys. Um, and for those of you that are online sharing with us, watching with us, thank you for being here. Tonight we're going to um, continue our study in the book of Colossians. If you haven't been here with us for a while, we're, we're walking through. Look, I've got a whole library I'm going to share with you tonight. Look at this. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, anyways, by the way, before, uh, don't leave Caleb. Don't leave yet. Caleb, today's Caleb's birthday. He's 38. I mean, 28. He's 28 today. And I said, hey, we're throwing you a party. Uh, we'll have about 30 people here, and you got to lead worship, though. So uh, this is Caleb's party. So Haley's party. Uh, anyways, never mind. So uh, happy birthday. Anyways, uh, how many of you like you like you enjoy praying out loud? Not, not most of us, right? Let's see. Anybody want to try it? You want to come up and pray out loud? Anybody? But not in front of people? You don't like to do it in front of people? It doesn't matter. This mic's not on anyway, so it's just a prop. You know, we don't really like to pray out loud. I mean, sometimes we struggle with prayer, right? Sometimes it's just something, I don't know what it is, we freeze up. I remember when I was first, um, before I went into ministry, I was uh, I was elected as a deacon, and I thought, well, that's it. You know, that's the that's you know, that's where all people go to die. I guess I don't know, but that was it for me. You know, I, I wouldn't have to, uh, anyways. But I had to at the church that I was that we were members of. The deacons had to uh, had come up to the in front of the and they had to pray every Sunday. One deacon was assigned to pray every Sunday, and you know, when it was my Sunday, I would be sweating bullets. And, you know, now I preach for a living, and it's okay. I love doing this, but back then. Then I thought, man, I can't do this. I can't pray in front of other people. What you know? That's just an, it's just intimidating. And sometimes it's get, it's. Have you, how many of you've seen? I probably shouldn't ask you this because this is probably not the best movie. But have you seen the movie Meet the Parents? Anybody ever seen that movie? How many have not seen the movie? Okay, this is totally going to blow it for you. But um, there's a scene in the movie. Now, I was going to show it, but I, I'm, I'm not showing it So uh, tonight. But uh, he's uh, this Greg. Um, his name's Greg. It's uh, Ben. Ben. Um, Stiller. St Stiller. Thank you. Ben Stiller. Thank you. He's in. The, and so he's uh, from a different faith background. I think he's Jewish. So, but he's asked to, to give, to say the grace at the meal. Do you all know what I'm talking about? And so he does, the, he gives the grace. And here's what he says. This is, this is the script that he says. Uh, his name was Greg Fokker in the, the movie. So um, yeah, be careful what you say. He says, oh dear Lord, thank you. You are such a good God to us, a kind and gentle and accommodating God. And we thank you, oh sweet, sweet Lord of hosts, for this. And you can just hear Ben Stiller saying this, right? Uh, the, the, we, the sweet, sweet Lord of hosts, for the smorgasbord you have so aptly laid at our table this day. And each day, by day, day by day, by day, oh dear Lord, the three things we pray to love thee more de clearly, to see thee more clearly. Uh, I'm sorry. Love thee more dearly, see thee more clearly. He says it better than I did. And to follow thee more nearly day by day by day. Amen. And that was his blessing. for the, That was his prayer. And sometimes we feel like when we get done praying, if we have to pray out loud, sometimes we feel like we're, we stumble that way too, right? Sometimes we just feel like, man, I just, I just stumbled over words. This morning I preached uh, at our church at First Family, and um, apparently I didn't know it until I think it was Brady told me afterwards I said the wrong scripture passage or something. Did you tell me that or my wife did? Yeah, thank you. Uh, see? See, when you're married, always there to support you. Always there to support you. Um, so I said the wrong scripture passage or something. I read the right one, but I referenced the wrong one. Anyways, so when we, sometimes we just get tongue-tied. Right? Well, prayer isn't about impressing other people. Prayer is about just communicating with God. And we put so much pressure on ourselves because we want to sound, you know, we, and listen, I've had to pray in seminary classes and with people who are much more intelligent than I am. And, it, it, and it's intimidating. But it's not that we're trying to impress other people with our words. It's that we are trying to just have communication with God. We're sharing with God that the Almighty God, that should be, that should be what's so awe-inspiring to us. That should be kind of what is fearful to us. Not that we are impressing other people with the words we say, but that we are speaking to the, the creator of the universe. 
of all things. And we get to spend a few moments with him. I don't know about you, but I take prayer for granted. I was talking with our uh, uh, leadership, kind of the band and some of the sound guys just before, and we just kind of talk over the message a little bit, and I don't like pre-preach it to them, um, and then they'd all leave. But um, uh, but anyways, I, we just kind of go over the message a little bit and and uh, just talk some talking points. And I said, you know, I, t- I take prayer for granted so often. It's, it's that time that I get, that we, all of us, get to spend with the creator of the universe, the God of all gods, the God who is sovereign. And I just don't make the most of it. I don't take those opportunities. I let distractions and, and noise from the world kind of get in the way. And it's not always bad things, but it gets in the way of me spending time with my heavenly father. And we're going to see tonight that it was important enough for Jesus to spend some really quality time with his heavenly father. And if it's important enough for Jesus, right, what would Jesus do? I mean, if it's important enough for Jesus, then it should be important enough for us. If Jesus needed to spend time with his father alone, then we do too. So as we've been walking through the book of Colossians, and you know, kind of passage or, or chapter by chapter, um, we just kind of talked about how, what does it mean to be rooted? Uh, we, we used the passage out of Colossians chapter 2. I, I, don't, I don't think I gave this to be on the screen, but it's chapter 2, verse 6. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him. So we're rooted and built. What does that mean? We, we're rooted in him. We are firm in our faith. We are firm because we know we're rooted in his word. And we are, that causes us to be firm in our faith. We are strong. So in other words, if we're deeply rooted, if we are firmly planted then storms will come and they will come to everybody and we will all face difficulties but when we face those difficulties if we are firmly rooted in God and in his word then yes we will be shaken but we will not be knocked over it will not rattle it'll shake us yes but it won't knock us off of our feet because we're firmly rooted in God and his word and it's not something quick we, uh, I told you last week we, we had, um, in a moment of weakness, we adopted a dog, um, the Tasmanian devil. And uh, he, he uh, I, I was meeting with a lady who says she's the dog whisperer, and I hope she is. Um, because I'm spending too much money on this dog already. But she's supposed to be coming in the next five weeks or whatever to spend an hour or session with him. And she said, it's not going to, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, it's, it's not a quick process. It's slow. And it, with our, when being rooted in our faith, it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that we have to continually uh, to go to the Word. We have to continually go to our Father. And over time, we get firmly planted in His Word. And we get firmly planted in our faith. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. But it's always worth it. So we've looked at the benefits of being rooted in the Word. We've looked at some of the, some of the reasons why we should be rooted. And tonight, as we go into chapter 4, we're going to look at prayer. Do you know that prayer is mentioned about 400 times in Scripture in some capacity? I mean, why else would Paul say in, in 1 uh, Thessalonians, pray without ceasing? Which, by the way, how do we do that? Is that even possible? Well, it is... In, in, in the sense that we have, to, it's, prayer is an attitude of prayer. It's not that we're, uh, I was telling the earlier, it's not that we're on our knees praying 24 hours a day. And it, now there's times for that. And, there, and yes, we have to do that. We have to have that isolated time when we are alone with God. But it's about just going throughout our day. Every day that we go, we are spending time with God as we go throughout our day. That's praying without ceasing. We are always in an attitude of prayer. That's what Paul is referring to. It's that important. What do we do? What does prayer have to do with being rooted? Look in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now Jesus was praying. Praying. Boy, I've been in the South way too long. Praying. See, he's fixing to. That's what I want to say. He's fixing to pray. Jesus was praying in in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. I 
think if I were with Jesus, like, like one of his, if I was walking and seeing what, I would have wanted to know that too. Lord, teach us to pray. So he does. We know that story. You know, he begins to teach them to pray and how, how prayer is so vitally important to us. Look at Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Paul is writing to, he's finishing up. This is the last chapter in the book of Colossians. And here's what he says. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Continue steadfastly in prayer. Just this simple verse, one verse right here, this simple verse, which by the way, this is the beginning of, of a really important passage that we're going to look at next week um, as we wrap up the book, the series, in, our series in Colossians. But he says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, I pray that you will share, just open our eyes, our ears tonight. Lord, remove me for anything that I may say that just is confusing. I, I, Lord, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to say anything that is contrary to your word or is confusing to anyone. Everything that comes out of my mouth, Father, I want to come straight from you and be pleasing to you. Father, just speak to us. We are your servants. Lord, we, we long to hear a fresh word from you. We need to hear a fresh word from you tonight. Lord, I ask these things in your name. Amen. So here's here's what I, I found. There's just three things, and really there could be more, but you know, like I said, I'm, you know, anyways, we usually find three things in this passage. So what we know about prayer, why prayer is vitally important, if we are going to remain rooted in the Word of God or in our faith in God, prayer is important on three ways. Here's number one, here's prayer is important. It has to be frequent. Did you see what he said? Fastly. It has to be something that we frequently do. It has to be something that is a regular part of our lives. He says continue. That means to go on or to keep going. It has to be a regular part of our day, of our daily routine. Not in like in a habit or in the, oh, well, I didn't pray today. I feel guilty. I need, now I need to pray. And that's not that. It's something that we long to do. It's something that as we do it, as we continue to pray more, we will long to be spending time with God. We will long for that. I told you I, got, I brought several books. Um... I'm not going to read all of these books to you, I promise. But, but just, just some, some references here. Listen to what, this is Doug, from Doug Fields' uh, book called Refuel. Doug Fields was kind of like a, you know, the father of youth ministry, sort of speak, so to speak. He was the student pastor in Saddleback out in California, a real little church out there. You know, you've probably heard of it, uh, Purpose Driven Life, all that stuff. But here's what he says. We need to refuel regularly. Because refilling, this is talking about prayer, but refilling is where God provides true satisfaction down deep where it really matters. We need to refuel ourselves, but even in our prayer life, regularly. It has to be something that we regularly do. We have to continually go to the throne of grace, go to the throne of God, and spend time with Him on a regular basis. I have a lot of things that I do regularly. I drink water. I drink Diet Mountain Dew pretty often. That's my only thing. I, I, I drink coffee, water, and Diet Mountain Dew. I'm pretty boring. I'm just pretty, I'm, I'm just, you know, that's really it. I'm very vanilla. I, I don't really, you know, I'm just coffee, water, and Diet Mountain Dew. That's pretty much it. I don't drink juice. I don't, I, you know, nothing else. But that's it. So I drink those regularly without thinking. I just, that's what I, that's my go-to. I don't do that really with my time with the Lord. Sometimes I just neglect that. If I'm just being gut honest with you, I just neglect it. I, I, I don't always, I, I wish I was addicted to prayer like I'm addicted to Diet Mountain Dew. Or, and I, boy, that's a real spiritual, that's deep, isn't it? That's a deep spiritual thought right there. Addicted to prayer, as addicted as you are to Diet Mountain Dew or Starbucks or whatever it is that your addiction is, what, whatever your addiction is. Look at what, listen to what uh, Jesus says in Luke chapter uh, 5, verse 16. But he would, uh, he, Jesus, and so this is about Jesus, is that he would withdraw to desolate places to pray. 
Now, in, in that passage in the NIV, the, I'm reading from the ESV, but in the New uh, International Version, it, it uses the word often. It says he would often retreat to desolate places to pray. This was a part of Jesus' regular routine. And we'll get to why a desolate, we'll get to that in just a second, why it was a desolate place. But he would often this is God in the flesh. He wasn't just partly God. He was God in the flesh. And he saw the need to spend time with his father on a regular basis. Pretty good bet that you and I need to do the same. It has to be something that when we, if we, if we miss it, I mean, he set the example for us. If we miss it, then we truly are missing it. And it hurts because we're not spending time with God. We're just not spending time with God. But how often is it it's so easy to just grab our phone or, or watch something on Netflix or, or just wh whatever it may be. And it's, now listen, I'm not saying it's bad things. It's just, it's just things of the world can pull us away from spending time with our Father. There are people today, and I, I say this a lot, I know, but there are people today in other parts of the world that they, they risk and sometimes lose their lives because they would, they would die to spend time with their Heavenly Father. It's that important to them. People are being put to death in parts of our world just to do this, what we're doing. And not even that, just to spending time with God, praying to God. And here we just, I can't say we, maybe you, but me, I can say me. I just take it for granted. And I miss it. I miss opportunities to make the most of those moments with God. Romans 12, Paul writes, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. How consistent are we in our prayer life? Do we see how essential it is for our walk? We learn things about God. He teaches us things about himself just by spending time. And I get it. Listen, sometimes it's hard because we are a uh, society or a culture that we really, we need to see like immediate things, right? We need to see immediate benefits of things. We, you know, we want things to happen quickly. I do. I hate waiting at the microwave, right, for anything, you know. And, I mean, it's a microwave for crying out loud. We, you know, we used to have to, I remember when we had to pop popcorn over the stove and it took, like, forever. And now I'm complaining because it takes three minutes in the microwave, right, or however long it takes. I don't know how long it takes. But anyways, you, all, all my have, I have a butt, popcorn button, so I don't even know how long it takes. But so, uh, listen, that's all. But now we... Why did I even say all of that? I don't know what I'm talking about. But we, we, we're, we want something and we want it now. We, we, we want to see immediate results. And sometimes when we spend time in prayer with God, it doesn't, it, we don't see the instant results, do we? It just takes time. And we have to cultivate that over time. Spending time with Him regularly, that's what's important. Secondly, prayer must be fundamental. He says, continue steadfastly. Steadfastly means it's important or it's fixed, it's firm, it's unwavering. It's got to be fundamental in our lives. Meaning that nothing should get in the way of our time spent with God. There are important things in life. I get that. There are things that take up our time. I get, I understand that. We, we, we all have responsibilities, right? We either have school responsibilities or work responsibilities or, you know, spouse responsibilities or parent responsibilities. We all have responsibilities. I get that. But we sometimes let those responsibilities take place or take precedence over our time spent alone with God. Listen, our prayer life has to be fundamental. It has to be steadfast. Nothing gets in the way of our time spent with God. It can't. We can't allow that. It's that it has to be that important. I have a friend 
and, it, and really it's even hard for me to call him a friend. He, he's, he's been a mentor to me. I, I'm not on his level spiritually. I'm not on his level in any way. His name is Richard Ross. I think I've mentioned him before in here. He, he is a, a professor of student ministry at Southwestern uh, Baptist Theological Seminary in, in Fort Worth, Texas. And um, he is, if you remember the True Love Waits movement, if you were a part of, if you saw any of that or remember any of that, if you grew up in that type of setting, he and another person, they created that. I mean, he wrote that curriculum. That was, He birthed that. So he's like the grandfather. Doug Fields is the father of student ministry. Richard Ross is the grandfather of student ministry. I've had him speak at every church that I've been, you know, at both churches that I've served at. I've had him speak several times. And he's just been just a, a great encourager to me in so many ways. And not just me. To anybody that has ever been in student ministry, he has been a great encourager. But I, I, And he doesn't spend a lot of time on social media. But sometimes when I see see his Facebook posts, I think, man, I am such a poor example of a Christ follower. And listen, Richard Ross doesn't do anything to draw attention to himself. I know the man well. I, I, I mean, I would, I would trust him with anything. He doesn't do anything to draw attention to himself. He, but when he posts things on Facebook, he, if, he, if he posts anything at all, it's always about spending time in the presence of the Almighty King. And it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking, man, I am a terrible excuse of a Christ follower comparing myself to, to Richard Ross. But you see, that's the thing. We're not to compare ourselves to others. And that's not why Richard Ross posts that stuff. He just wants us to see that we have to spend time with our Heavenly Father. It has to be fundamental in our lives. Mark ch chapter 1 verse 35 says this, And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, He, Jesus, departed and went out, here's that word again, to a desolate place, and there He prayed. A desolate pray place. First thing in the morning. How you doing with that one? <laughs> Sometimes I think, you know, I'm going to read when I go to bed at night and pray. That never works for me. I mean, I, I'm like, I'm, I don't fall asleep real easily, but if I start praying, then I will fall asleep because it's just the way, it's just the way it is. I have to do it in the morning or sometime in the middle of it. But in the morning, when, when he, he, he talks about that, it shouldn't be an afterthought. It has to be something that we do early in the morning. One of the best books on prayer I've ever read, and I'll, I'll share a couple things from this book tonight probably, is called um, A Praying Life by Paul Miller. I wasn't familiar with this book. I, I, somebody shared it with me a couple years ago, and I read it two years ago, two, uh, three years ago now. But here's what he says in one part. He says, when you know that you, like Jesus, can't do life on your own, then prayer makes complete sense. Sometimes prayer doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Because we can't, we don't always see it. Like I said, we don't always see immediate reaction. We don't always see immediate response from it or affirmation from it. But he says prayer is that important. I posted this the other day. Listen to this. This is so, this, this right here is worth all the money that you paid to get in tonight. You didn't pay, but here's... Listen to what he says. If you are not praying, then you are quietly, confidently, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. If you are not praying, then you are quietly confident that time, money, and talent are all that you need in life. You'll always be a little too tired, a little too busy. But if, like Jesus, you realize you can't do life on your own, then no matter how busy, no matter how tired you are, you will find the time to pray. I love that first line. If you are not praying, then you are quietly confident that time, money, and talent are all that you need. And we may not ever say that out loud, but really that's what we're saying with our actions, right? 
if we're not spending time with God and in His Word. Prayer has to be fundamental. It has to be frequent. And then the last point, it has to be focused. Did you see what he said? He said in verse 2, again, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful. Being watchful. What are we watching for? We're watching for lots of things. The enemy likes to attack us in those moments. Like when you're praying, trying to, you know, laying down at night. The enemy wants to attack then and just you just fall asleep. Being watchful. He says being watchful means we need to be vigilant or alert, not letting anything else interfere, even sleep at times. Not, when, not letting anything draw our attention away from spending time with God. Can I just tell you of all of these, and, and I don't do any of these real well, this is the one I struggle with the most. I'm easily distracted. I don't, I've never been diagnosed with like um, ADD or anything like that, but I know I am easily distracted. I, I struggle staying focused on anything. I really do. This is a hard one for me. It really is. And it doesn't have to be anything. I mean, I, I'm not, it doesn't have to be my phone. It doesn't have to be the TV. It doesn't have to be a computer. It, have, it just, my mind starts wandering, starts drifting into other things. Am I, am I the only, am I the only weird one or does anybody else do that? I don't know what it is. Well, I guess I do know what it is. It's the enemy that's attacking us, I think, in those moments and trying to steal our focus. Listen, it has to, we have to be watchful. Again, Mark 30, Mark 1 uh, verse 31 says, when Jesus, he's rising early and he departs and went to a desolate place. Why do you think he goes to a desolate place? Be no distractions. Even Jesus knew there were distractions. Can you imagine I, we can't imagine being Jesus, but imagine if you were Jesus. People were always seeking him, good or bad, wanting him to heal them or wanting to arrest him or whatever. People were always crowding around him. He had to secretly go to desolate places, to remote places where nobody else would be, just so he could have time with his father. And you and I need to do the same. If we're going to be live the example that he set for us. Desolate, these barren, solitary, lonely places. Jesus saw the need to be alone with his Father in those lonely, isolated places. I, I sometimes... Even in those situations, I sometimes get distracted there because it's just too quiet, right? Uh, I like having a little noise. I like having like a fire, not not like a real fire. I have like a uh, I have like a candle that the wood wick candle. I like those, you know. I'm showing my feminine side here, I guess. But I have a candle with a wood wick. Uh, I used to have a little fountain that kind of, you know, and then, but that, then I would always use bathroom. So I couldn't, I couldn't turn the fountain on anymore. But anyway, so I, I like, I like the, the sound of like wood crackling or whatever. So I like that. That just kind of, it doesn't, it, it keeps me, it helps keep me focused. Whatever it is that you need to do to stay focused. Listen, our time with God needs to be uninterrupted in any way that we have, whatever we have to do, make that a priority. Whatever you have to do, make being, spending time with God frequent. Make sure that it's fundamental, that it's important in your life, that nothing else will come in place of it. And make sure that it's a focused time, that you are just alone, you and your heavenly Father, spending time together. Nothing should take place of that. Uh, one last passage I want to share with you. In 1 John chapter 5, John writes this in verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have made of him. You see, Jesus hears us. He wants to have that communication with us. It doesn't mean that he'll just lavish us and give us whatever we want. It means that he wants to hear from his children. 
I have two children. I want to hear from them. Much more than that. I have three children, sorry. I have three children. Now people online are going to be like, what? Um, so, so much more than that. That, does, that pales in comparison to how God wants to hear from us. We are his children. He longs to hear from us. And as his children, we should long to spend time with him and communicate with him. Even when sometimes it's difficult, it has to be that important in our life. So let me ask you a couple questions. Is prayer a regular part of your life? And if not, what do you need to do? What do you need to get rid of or move around in your life to make prayer be a regular part of your life? What do you need to do? Do you need to get up earlier? Do you need to stay up a little later? Someone asked me once, um, you know, I don't know when to have my prayer time. Should I have it in the morning or in the evening? What's best? And I said, yes. Yes, you should have it in the morning. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. I like having more of the time in the morning. I think that's what works best for me. But it doesn't, whatever, just spend time with your Heavenly Father. What do you need to do? to kind of orchestrate your life to where you can have regular time with your Heavenly Father. And then the last thing, just as for you, for me to be rooted, prayer must be a requirement. And what I mean by that is this. We have to see that prayer is essential in our lives. Our relationship with our Heavenly Father will never be all that God desires for it to be if we don't spend time with him on a regular basis and, and uh, just and, and it's important and we are focused with no distractions we will never I don't believe we will ever be all that God has saved us to be if we don't see prayer as a central part of our walk is prayer a regular part of your daily routine let me pray for you may the Lord bless you and keep you His countenance upon you.